Oh, what's up, people? Dom Schwartz is right here, and welcome to Game Gems, the, the show where we talk about games that should be gems and should be in your collections. Last episode, we did the greatness of the PlayStation 1, but now we're moving on to my favourite console of all time, the PlayStation 2. When the PlayStation 1 went ahead and succeeded, they went ahead and made another console. People were expecting it was going to be something, something else called, like, PlayStation Extreme or something, or something else. But no, it was just called simply the PlayStation 2, or for the cool kids, the PS2. Now the PlayStation 2 was known to have the biggest library of games known to man. That big in fact, it has sold the most units of all consoles around the world. And lo and behold for me, I pretty much nearly completed the whole entire collection, to be honest. I'm only missing a few copies of games. But mainly wants to complete them fully. So I don't mind if I'm miss if I'm missing a disc where I've got the box in the manual. I just need a disc. I'll just buy that randomly and just put it in there. Boom. All completed. But some games that are in English. I don't have them in English. But I've got them in Japanese. Because I've got a Japanese console. So I still have them that way. But either way people. I have myself here. Five. PlayStation 2 games right here. And as you can see. One of them is in a very very special case. Keep that in mind, people, because that's the last one I'm going to talk to you about. i got five games right here that are my personal gems for the time being. There is way more gems out there in my collection, which I'll have to do in another episode in the next series for next year, for Season 2. Enough jibber-jabbering. Let's get this started, shall we? For the first one, last episode, we talked about Forbidden Memories. Let's talk about the other one that was another one that came out following the same manoeuvre but a complete different storyline and a different type of gameplay. That is Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Duelist of the Roses. This one was the one I always play and I still love it to the very day. This is my original copy, people, that had the Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Sadly, I don't have them cards anymore because I traded them off years ago as a child. Now, this game it's pretty much exactly the same as Forbidden Memories. It has no ties to the card game. So you don't need to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! to play this game. However, you need to learn how to play chess. It's pretty much like a chessboard game. Based off um, different um, terrains that boost up your monsters or debuff your monsters. And of course you need to learn spells and traps on how they work. So a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! here and there but a lot of the monsters have different effects, different type, different typings, and some of them had different attack and defense buffs. But as well, the story is based off Great British um, lore, the Battle of the Roses. Uh, the, the Lancastrians versus the Yorkshire, if I recall, Yorkshire versus Lancaster. And as you guys know. You have yourself Yugi and Kaiba who are going to be the, the Rose people. You have the Red Rose versus the White Rose. And of course, there is characters in that game that are connected to the anime. So of course you've got Taya, you've got Mai, you got yourself Tristan, Joey Wheeler, Mokabar as well if I recall. Uh, Mako Tsunami, you got yourself Bandit Keith and Panic and Maximilian Pegasus is in it as well. There's so many people that are from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series is in this game. It's freaking amazing. Now as well as, this is just as hard as Forbidden Memories. Not as hard as Forbidden Memories, but it's just as hard. All I can say to you people is that you have to learn to play chess. To make sure you know your typings, you know the monsters, you know what they do, and you know where the king is. You've got to get to the king to lose their life points. Hit the king twice, you win the game. If not, and you can't get to the king, destroy their monsters and make them lose their life points. And the life points are only 4,000. It's not even 8,000, so it's a lot more easier. But yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses, a phenomenal game. Definitely recommend it to put in your collection. Next up, we're going with one that is very, very underrated and not a lot of people know about. And I've talked about this game a few times on my streams, and that is Orphan. Sovereign of Society. Uh, or, or Sorcery Amount. This game as well is one of my original games I, that I purchased when I was a child. And uh, to this very day, sadly I never beat it. 
and I still struggle to it. I probably got to like chapter five and then that was it. I never got any further. I struggle on it a lot. But the controls are spot on. I really like the controls. The characters are memorable. There's animation in it as well, so it's a bit of anime if you want that as well. Um, the dungeon areas are fantastic as well. Music's great. And the characters, they're very memorable. Some of them are quite funny. Some of them are quite annoying. But most of them, you can look up to them or you can relate to them more likely. And the one that I always relate to is the... Um, it's pretty much the... Um, He's like a young boy in the game who is um, thinking he wants to be the best, but he can't because he knows he's a loser and all that. Like, this is me when I was a kid. Like, you know, you guys know what I mean. But he thinks he was the best, but he, you know, he wasn't. But yeah, 100% great game. If you guys do find it, definitely do recommend picking it up. It's around about a £10 to £15 game, so it's a reasonably priced game right now. I would recommend to go ahead and pick it up right now. Definitely worth going in your collection. Next up, whew, flip and neck, another one from Konami. And no, it's not Castlevania, don't worry about it. But it is Seven Killers. Seven Blades, sorry, it's not Seven Killers, fucking hell. I don't even own Seven Killers, it's too expensive of a game. Seven Blades, though. Whew, this game, freaking amazing. You can play as two characters, the boy or the girl, doesn't matter. However, their weapons depend on what one you pick. If you play the female, she carries guns, nothing else. So she can have a pistol, shotgun, machine gun, rocket launcher, grenade launcher, anything she can get. Then you have the boy, carries blades. So he can have a buster blade, he can carry a bastard blade, he can carry a dagger, he can carry knives, he can carry throwing knives, he can throw shurikens. Anything that's like a blade or a sword, he's carrying it. Now how I play the game is I play long range. So I'm always playing the female to go ahead and use the guns because the guns were super, super strong. The blades, they were great, but some of them were very, very slow, so I have to choose on how you want to play it. Now, with this game as well, I never got to be either. <laughs> I got very, very close near the end and sadly didn't get to finish it. Probably one day I may go back and finish it again, but I just love it very, very much. It's a fantastic game. I don't understand why this game hasn't got either got a remake or got a limited run copy, or even put on the essential list on the freaking PlayStation 5. Come on, PlayStation, it's a PlayStation game. It was exclusive to PlayStation. It's made by Konami. Just ask freaking Konami to make it. Come on. Let's go into the collection. Next up, the big two. The big two. First one though, second most expensive game on the PlayStation 2. Sadly, this is the Japanese version. I don't have the English version. But I picked up very fucking cheap when I was over there. This is Michigan from Hell. Also, in Japanese, it's just called Michigan. But in English, it's called Michigan with Port from Hell. Now, if you guys want my opinion on this, I don't know anything about the story yet. I've not touched it yet. All I'm saying is, it's going straight into the gem collection because I've wanted this game for so many years and now I've finally got it in, in, in Japanese I'm just happy. All I'm seeing right now people, as you guys can see, is my first looking at it as well when I'm doing the editing, is the gameplay and the graphics. And I've seen clips of this as well and some of it is very freaking dark. Quite, very twisted if you want to know. And by God, people, I can't wait to play it. I just wish, I really wish that PlayStation get a remake for this or even Limited One could do that or something like that. For fuck's sake, I want this remastered so I can live stream this on my channel. Sadly, I can't do that because my Elgato's fucked. But, no need to worry. I'm sure there'll be a way for me to play this on the channel in the future. But yeah. Michigan for Mel, it's a gem in my eyes. Love it. But now, it's time for the main one. The big one. The big one. The one I've been hunting down for God knows how many years. I'd say at least 10 years I've been hunting this game down for. And I finally got it. 
It is a brand new sealed copy of it. And I bought it like this. Do you know what it is? A few guys have been knowing me on my channels. I talk about this game all day long. It's Rule of Rose. This game is made by Atlas. It is the most rarest. It's one of the most it, most hardest ones to find on the PlayStation 2. And especially a sealed copy is freaking unheard of. Don't believe me? It's sealed. This game right now, as a sealed copy, goes for a £1,000, people. This thing right here that I'm holding, this one game, is worth a grand. Insane, isn't it? However, besides the pricing of this game, why is it so expensive and why is it a gem? The main reason is because this game was banned in the United Kingdom. They got a few copies released in the United Kingdom, but they all got called back because of how freaking bad it was. How bad, you may say? This game is about child abuse. Some scenes show you child abuse. And that's a massive no-no in the United Kingdom, and especially in America as well. And that's why in America it's even more expensive. But by God, people, I just cannot believe, though, that I got my hands on this game right here, right now. It's fan freaking fantastic. Have I played it? Nope. I never played it. I have never touched it. I am not going to open this copy. That's why I'm still on the hunt for an actual opened, unsealed copy because I want to give the game a go. I've seen numerous gameplays of it. It looks amazing. I can't wait to play it myself. That is why this game is a freaking gem. Now, a lot of you may be th saying to me, obviously, I don't believe you. This is not a sealed copy. You don't believe me? I can pop this, this sleeve right out and show you. That is an official PlayStation seal of approval. That, my friends, is a £1,000 game. Be jealous! <laughs> now, a lot of people may be questioning me, people saying, What a fucking waste of money! You don't even play it and you're not over and open it because it's worth a grand? You sad bastard! Yeah, but think about it. It's an investment at the end of the day. An investment. Retirement fund. Hello? <laughs> but yeah, people, that is my PlayStation 2 gems of this that series. If you guys want to know what be my other um, gems I want to go for for the PlayStation 2, you've got to stay tuned for the next series, which will be next year. With that being said, as you guys know, these are my choices for the PS2. you got Rule of Rose, Yu-Gi-Oh, Orphan, Seven Blades, and Michigan. With that being said, the people I'm sleeping goes to you guys for subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!